Hi everybody, welcome to Gumbo TV, brought to you by Harbourlink Japan, and we are at the Shizuoka Hobby Show, and Ryan is back. Hello, Sid. Hi, Ryan, it's good to have you back. How was it? Did you miss me? Not really, but uh, <laughs> I need a co-host, so uh, I guess it's good you're around. So today, what are we going to show? Bandai. That's right, we're going to show all the stuff at Bandai, but uh, I kind of want to hang around here, because the Aventador is here. Can I? the BRZ is down there. Yeah. Th I still prefer the Aventador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so seeing as we're not actually allowed to touch the car or get inside of it, we can't waste any more time here. We're going to head off to the Bandai booth and show you guys all the newest Gundam that is sitting over there. Yes. All right, we, we got a little distracted on our way to the Bandai booth. Ryan, what do you got in your hands there? It's a P90 with an extended uh, barrel. That's right. I can see uh, last time we were at the Tokyo show, we got to play with the SCAR, L, and the AUG, and now they've got the submachine guns. they got the P90, and there's an MP7A1 over there. So. Uh, Ryan, I know you really like uh, this kind of well, stuff, but COD uh, 4 was the best gun. Yeah, it's just the best in Battlefield 3. It's yeah. really good too. So we have to actually leave. I'm sorry, but we had to go. What? Yeah, we have to go over there. That's I what our job is. We do a show about Gundam. That's right. This is a gun, but it's not a Gundam. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll come back here if we have some time. Yeah, yeah for sure. All right. Well, we're here at the Bandai booth. Yay! With a yeah, gun, with a Gundam geek uh, Sid. I will have to go behind the camera now, so Sid will be your tour guide. Hey, wait, we're not doing this thing together like we always do? Well, that guy who used to work for us. Oh, we don't have a cameraman. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll ganbarimasu. Uh, good luck back there. Thank you very much. All right. All right, so the first thing we're going to show you is this uh, Master Grade they have. Uh, it's going to be released in August. And you can tell it's from the Gundam Age. It is the H2 Normal. And of course, this has already been released as an Advanced Grade and an HDUC. But uh, I personally love the H1 normal, and I'm glad to see that the H2 normal is coming out. And uh, as you can see from the display here, it's going to be transformable. You're going to be able to uh, turn it into this Wave Rider mode, similar to the Delta Plus. So it's probably going to have uh, some design elements similar to that, or the Rezzel. And uh, while we're on Gundam H, they actually have the, uh, the three H1 normals, three H1s, the Master Grades. We have the Spalo there. You can see it's, it's got that dark blue flat look to it. It looks pretty good, I must say, flat it. And uh, beside it, it has the H1 normal. And uh, we showed this kit on the show, and we showed it on our last episode where I raved about it. It's one of the best kits I've ever made. And then it's a uh, fat little brother here, the Titus. H1 normal Titus. And uh, it, it's the only kit of the series that comes with those type of effect parts. And uh, you can see it's posed for action here. And those big monstrous hands of his. And they actually created a diorama using all three of these kits. You can see that they've got the uh, pilot figure all painted up on the H1 there. And they have the legs and the arms for both the Titus and the Sparrow, as if uh, they are creating a new uh, Gundam combination here in a, in, a, in a factory somewhat. And while we're on Gundam Age, you know, the H1s and the H2s, here are the Mega Size. And uh, does this look familiar to you, Ryan? Yes, it does, Sid. Yeah, that's right, because uh, Ryan, I think we built this on the show, and uh, you're pretty fond of this, if I remember correctly. Love it. Yeah, and there's the H1 uh, normal, which I uh, also a fan of. This design appeals to me more and more each time I see it. And uh, now, this is for it for Gundam H for the large size kits. We'll look at some more later, but now we're going to move on to C. So here's the Master Grade for Seed. It's the 10th anniversary of Seed this year. So as you know, we've already had the dual Gundam with its assault shroud. We saw that before. And they, now they have prototypes for their new kits. And that, this is the Buster Gundam. Now this morning when we were here, uh, they only had that uh, the standing one in the back there with the weapons on its backpack, which I thought looked awesome. But uh, since we've come back up for lunch here, you can see they've actually put out a second prototype with its weapons all built and extended here. And you can see it can hold on to the, this monstrously long thing thanks to its handles. And it looks like it's quite capable of actually standing with it. We've got it in a pretty good pose. Uh, for the next Master Grade seat kit we're going to see in June, here's the Blitz. And uh, a lot of people are just really waiting on this one when they first announced it. Announced it. There's a lot of excitement. I always hit or miss on it, but now that I actually see it and what they're giving you in the kit when it comes to the weapons and the shield and that flying claw thing, I think it's going to be awesome. And uh, we're going to see this in June, so we're going to show it on Gumpa TV. And unfortunately for us at the show, they even showed us the box art. 
and this is the box, it's done. And uh, even the box art looks fantastic. So it looks like the Blitz is going to be uh, one of those kits that needs to be picked up if you're a seed fan. Well, speaking of stuff you need to see if you're a seed fan, check out the Rio Grey. You see, this is uh, a lot of people uh, crouching here, trying to get a shot of this uh, RG Justice. And RG Justice is due out in July. And if it's anything like it, the previous RG, it's going to be great. Now you can see here that they have uh, the uh, deactivated version of the Strike and the Ale or the Freedom and the Ale Strike. These are kits you can't buy. They only came out in the Bandai online shop. So if you're looking for these things, you got to look at the Kinte Kits uh, resellers that you can find online. And uh, here is the box art for the Justice Gundam. Now it's not finalized yet in that they don't have the sides done for it, but this is going to be what you see on the cover of the box art. And it looks great. And here he is in some action poses. And you can see those wings, they fold out to the full length there, which is quite impressive. I wonder how many runners it's going to take to actually make this kit. And he actually still stands, even with this uh, backpack sticking out the back here. This guy's standing up all on his own. And uh, if we're talking about Gundam Seed, well, there's also the Astrace. This is a HG kit. Uh, this is the R16 MA, M1 Astray, which is due out next month. It looks pretty good, looks solid, looks like you'll uh, have uh, some good proportions on it. It's gonna be, not going to be terribly expensive, it's only going to be about 1400 yen or so. And uh, moving on, we're going to look at some Zeta Gundams, because they're advertising the, uh, the Blu-rays uh, for the Zeta Gundam here. And you can see beside that that they have the latest, uh, newest, Real Grace. We've got the AUG and we've got the Titans, and they both look fantastic. Whoever built these has done an amazing job. All the panel lines have been on, been done. The stickers have been put on. It looks great. And while we're talking about Zeta, well, there's the Anxia. It's going to be coming out this month, actually. And, uh, you can see it's this wild green color. And uh, they've actually got to place some previous uh, Delta Gundams and other uh, Zeta Gundams here in the shot. But looking up here, this is the, the somewhat big news because we didn't know about it when, before we came here. It's the Hamrabi, and it is going to see a uh, HD version in August. And it says it took 27 years to actually put out an HD, ver an HD version of this kit, HGUC. And uh, what they've actually managed to do looks pretty impressive. You can see it's got that wire for its weapon. And you can see it's going to have very detailed hands here. People have already, builders have already panel lined. And uh, while we're on Zeta Gundam, let's move to the bigger stuff here. Here we have uh, the Marisai. And the Marisai is looking pretty good. It looks similar to the Zaka 2.0s. You can see on the, uh, the action post here that they've got, it's got the armor collars. And uh, the same with the... Uh, same with around the head here, it's got its gun. And uh, one thing you'll notice is that if we look over here, is that they've built the head, they've designed it so that it can take an LED. So if you have the gun for the LED unit, you actually build it as part of this thing just inside the chest underneath the neck, and you'll have a mono eye. And the box art actually reflects that. You see they've made this glimmering eye here. So look forward to being able to uh, install those gun to LEDs in the Marisa. Now this uh, Marisai here, it's got this contraption on it. What's this? Well, it's, it's called a Balut Pack. And uh, Balut Pack is also on the Hack, Shiki, and Zach and Emos up here. On the Dom, the Dyer. They've got it built on here. But if you look here, you can see that the box art is not colored or anything. Here's the runner. This is actually the Blue Pack. is only available for Van Dyke's premium store. So you have to order it there. And uh, if, you, if you don't... Uh, you know, live in Japan, you might not be able to get one. You have to check the online retailers like uh, GenteKits.com or Chichi Infinite and go through them. And uh, maybe you'll be able, to get, be able to get your hands on these things, but they're going to be very rare. This whole law is dedicated to the Dumball Sankey, the MB LBX kits. And they actually have them all lined up, but they also have a video playing over there, which is really loud. So getting in there and trying to actually uh, record audio is really difficult. Uh, the, re the announcement that we wanted to show you, though, is the newest Dumball Sankey kit, which is the Orvis, which they actually have its own display on the corner here. As you can see, it's the uh, orange and blue one circling there. Looks like it's got a Pikachu on its arm. And uh, this is going to be coming out in August as well. August will be a big month. It actually looks pretty cool for an LBX kit. Quite sizable. Looks like it's got lots of extra parts. 
and uh, a lot of time can be spent working on uh, those panel lines and stuff that they give you. So for you Dumball Sankey fans, you know, August is going to be your month. Alright, so this is uh, also a band, uh, their newest and not great Tiger Eyes line. You can see that they're doing Tiger and Bunny now. They've done the Kamen Rider this time, it's going to be Tiger and Bunny. And they actually are uh, really well done, as you can see. They've got uh, the proper markings. Here's Bandai, here's SoftBank. SoftBank handles the iPhones here in Japan, so it's really popular. And uh, you can also see that they give you these accessories. This one's got the giant boots. And uh, one other thing I should mention is that uh, they've got this little diorama on the bottom here. You can see that they're actually lit up pretty well under black light. This is similar to the, uh, the Master Ray Unicorn frame, how it does it. I don't know if this is uh, actually going to be how it works out of the box but we'll be able to report that more when these hit the stores in uh, June and July. Now something that I wasn't aware was going to be here are some kits from uh, an, an anime, a manga known as Excel World. You can see that they've got the Black Lotus and it looks very small. It looks like we're going to see a lot of parts in there. As well as the Silver Crow. Now the Silver Crow, well it looks a little bit uh, kind of riders to me except for those giant wings on the back here. That should be interesting. I imagine these wings are going to be one part one piece of plastic so that runner is going to be fairly big. But it also looks like there's a lot of detail in the hands and in the shoulders and the chest piece is somewhat. So uh, what these, these are going to be priced around the same as an HG kit. So if you want to try something new, look into the Excel World line. Alright, so if there are any Code Geese fans amongst the Gunpla TV viewers, well this is a little treat for you. The Flammo kit of the Akito. You can see uh, the Alexander Akito version here. You see, look, a lot of details here that they put into this kit. Now, it's very, very small. You can see here's my hand for reference here. This is going to be about 2,000 yen or so. And uh, they've actually got the runners on display. So this guy is going to be ready to go on sale uh, pretty soon. It says August release, but it looks like they've pretty much got everything ready to go. Okay, so they have, they have a small section for uh, Space Battleship Yamato in this, uh, in this uh, show. And it's actually quite busy because... Uh, you see a lot of people are standing around here. I think Kishiyama-san, who's one of the lead designers at Bandai, he's actually uh, back there answering questions and uh, talking about that uh, new Yamato that he's got in display right in front of him. It looks like it's, I'm not sure the scale, I haven't checked into it, but you can see that it's going to be quite a bit smaller than that Yamato we showed on Gumbo TV that uh, my friend Ryan has uh, previously built. But uh, I'm glad to see that there's a smaller scale version coming out. So those people who didn't want that big battleship sitting on their desk can build a smaller one. And uh, we'll show that when it comes out on uh, Gumba TV. Okay, we're actually at the uh, Hasegawa booth right now and we're looking at the, uh, the Virtual Roid kits. And uh, we haven't shown these on Gumba TV yet, but we actually uh, we want to show you the Virtual on in, a couple, uh, in an episode or two uh, in the future, near future, because uh, we have not shown them yet and they're actually pretty cool. If you look at the what they've got built at the show here, you can see uh, the kind of details that the uh, virtual on kits have here from Hasegawa. A lot of these are designed by uh, Katoku Hajime, and you can see the, uh, the influence in here. Now there's uh, two kits they actually have on display that are going to be coming out in the next couple months. Right here. This is the uh, MBV 747A. Temjin 747A. And uh, you can see it's similar to the previous Temjins. But uh, different color schemes. Uh, look at all the detail here on these uh, clear type parts, like and look at all, just all the sticker work that they give you in these uh, virtual on kits. And uh, an even crazier design is the YZR 8, 8004. And that YZR kind of reminds me of a, a motorcycle, and you kind of get a sport bike look. Sport bike look with this thing. You get a lot of sharp, sharp angles that narrow down at the front. And uh, this is going to be a limited edition that's going to be out in June, so you're going to see it uh, very soon. And uh, the big announcement for uh, Hasegawa and for their virtual on kits at this show was they have a kit coming out in December. And you can see it has a distinct uh, samurai look to it with the uh, Yoroi kind of feel and the Kabuto at the top there. This is called the uh, Kage Kyo. And uh, this is going to be scheduled for the winter. It just—it doesn't say anything yet, but uh, we're probably going to see it at uh, the event in Tokyo in October. And I imagine that we're going to see it released just in time uh, for the New Year. Which one?